is one of the biggest disasters uh, we have had here. What's the reason why you're escorting me outside? Tell me the reason. Yeah, tell me the reason. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel of AJFV. What we have on the menu today is the second Dutch football game in the channel's history. The first one was in January this year, Twente against Feyenoord. Link below for that video. The home team today will be the same, FC Twente from the East Dutch city of Enschede. A top flight game of course, round 5 of Eredivisie and they are up against record champions of the Netherlands, IFC Ajax. Both teams played one game less than the number of rounds because of European duties. Twente got eliminated from the European stage as they lost the Conference League playoffs against Turkish Fenerbahce. Ajax finished only third in last season's Eredivisie after consecutive league titles so they had to join the Europa League playoffs. They won the playoffs against Bulgaria and Ludogorets, so they'll be in the Europa League this season in Group B. The last 10 head-to-head -head comparison shows us 3 Twente and 5 Ajax victories completed with 2 draws. If we talk about Big 3 in the Netherlands, it's definitely Ajax, Feyenoord and PSV. But if we talk about Big 4 in terms of supporter culture, it's safe to add Twente to that list. It's not a coincidence they are named after a whole region in Eastern Netherlands. This region is not one of the hyped parts of the Netherlands, not one you would necessarily visit as a tourist, but as a groundhopper Oh yes, unmissable. As far as I know, Ajax is not the club Twente supporters would hate the most because that would be Feyenoord. But one thing is for sure, my Twente supporter friend who made this trip happen for the channel despises Ajax the most. We can count on a quite mad atmosphere. I hope the game will help with it as well. Historically, what a massive club Ajax are. 36 times Dutch champions, 4 times Champions League winners, well to be precise, 3 times European Cup and 1 UCL. A UEFA Cup, 3 UEFA Super Cups and the list goes on and on. They have a pretty decorated trophy cabinet as you see on screen. You can't make an intro about them without mentioning one of the biggest philosophers of the game, a creator of football, former player and manager, three times Ballon d'Or winner Johan Cruyff. An Ajax and Barcelona legend, arguably the biggest Dutch to play the beautiful game. The stadium of Ajax is named after him, of course. To put this game in context, when I'm filming this, I'm in Nürnberg, Germany for the Franken Derby. But by the time you see this, that vlog will be available, link to in description for you. We'll take the train to Enzheim now with the hope of avoiding any kind of delays. Let's go! Here we are in Enschede and I'm here with a 20 supporter. Thank you very much for taking the time. Can you tell the viewers what relevance this place has in the history of uh, Twente and the city? We are uh, here at uh, Droombeek, an area that has been struck by a disaster in 13th of May 2000. This used to be uh, a fireworks factory in a neighborhood with uh, normal houses uh, until the factory uh, exploded, which uh, is, is one of the biggest disasters uh, that we have had here. There were between 20 and 30 deaths and uh, 900 people injured and a lot of people lost their houses of course. The relevance what this has to Twente is that uh, a day later we had to play uh, a match in Rotterdam. Uh, we could still get a European ticket, so could Feyenoord, they could qualify for the Champions League. Of course Twente uh, applied for the, the game to be cancelled because it was their own city being hurt. They didn't want to play uh, but the KNVB said that uh, this is not important enough. Uh, the federation, right? Yeah, it's the for federation. The, for yes. the viewers from abroad, of course. Just to clear it up. Uh, so um, they said uh, it's not important enough, and uh, the game uh, had to be played. Uh, and the players went onto the field, uh, lost the game because they, their minds were somewhere else. And basically, after that, it's one of the most regretted games uh, that we have uh, ever played. I think former uh, Erik ten Hag uh, uh, captain. Uh, from Twente, uh, also said after the, the match, this is, a, this is a game we shouldn't have played, that they excuse themselves for actually playing the game uh, to the fans and the people of Enschede. And that's kind of a bit, uh, bit of a clash between the west of the Netherlands and the east of the Netherlands, these kind of things. They didn't even know. cancel, they didn't do anything on the last, it was the last match it of the season, the right? Match, yeah. And, uh, it's basically what happened and a year later it was 9-11 uh, happened on the other side of the planet and the whole competition uh, 
got stopped because of it but something that national had happened and where a club was actually involved in it it didn't get cancelled so i think it's a pity quite controversial yeah our second destination before the game guys you guessed it this is the cafe where twente was founded in 1965 after a merger of two local clubs we have a memorial plaque about it as well let's have a look quickly so the two local clubs, SA and Sade. And uh, Sade is a boys, as I see. That's the, the one on the right. So it's also a really relevant place to visit. After the merger of these two local clubs, they found it a really relevant institution for the community here in uh, Eastern Netherlands. parent clubs of FC Twente Sport Club and Sade play here on this ground. It's an artificial surface but uh, there are some natural grounds as well behind it. And Twente women, the first team of Twente women, play here as well. So we can get in so many important details, easter eggs about the club and the local culture and how all this contributed, how FC Twente was built up and how it is today. We'll carry on to the scoreboard now. Another plaque here. This scoreboard was preserved. And we have our guide once again telling some stories about it. Yeah, so this uh, scoreboard uh, uh, originated from the first stadium of Twente, which was first used by um, Sport Club uh, itself before Twente existed. When the stadium got demolished, SA Rekken, which is a football club, took the clock with them. Uh, not the clock, but the scoreboard. The clock was already gone, as well as the remote, uh, unfortunately. They wanted to demolish this, but then... Yeah. They Some stepped people. in and, uh, and took it uh, in time. They had 24 hours time to get it uh, and they succeeded. After uh, 20 years, returned to the uh, hallowed grounds of uh, Diekman by SV Glanenbrug, which is a supporters club from uh, a part of Enschede. It's more like a, uh, their own kind of uh, city. And this was the scoreboard before this one. Uh, Look at that guy, they, they actually uh, counted by? by balls and it would just lift up balls it's 2-2 two -two here uh, this clock was still uh, on that one uh, but unfortunately that would have been really cool if this one uh, could have come as well but it was already gone and that's everything about this clock basically so it's a piece of history right in, in front of, of our eyes yeah the, actually the last thing standing from the stadium to be fair the old stadium this, which yeah, was the approximately like over there that direction but uh, there is nothing to see about it anymore there's literally nothing remaining from the old stadium but here we have a, a picture of it so we can say that it's a significant improvement uh, today's venue the Rochester which <laughs> my Dutch friend always uh, laughs about me because I can't pronounce it correctly the funny thing is this is the it was the stadium's uh, speaker of uh, Liverpool and he came at the last uh, match in the uh, in the Diekman to hand over like the official club song basically so he came here and he uh, made it official that Twente could use the you never walk alone song for getting onto the field it was quite uh, so quite another important. puzzle piece put into its place because I didn't know before I don't think majority of the people uh, watching Twente from abroad don't know uh, where you never walk alone comes from here we have uh, a proof a proof uh, man from Liverpool that uh, that we can use it <laughs> We see some fundraising in the background at the VIP entrance. Can you please tell the viewers what that's about? Uh, yes, that's for his fundraising is for a club legend, Wal Brahma. He's going to get a statue and uh, fans are going to donate the money for uh, that to be made possible. And you had a farewell game of him last week where he had a TIFO as well, is that correct? That is correct. I was not at the game, but uh, there was a farewell game with some of the best players he played with. 
Please give me a score prediction for today's game. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be a difficult game. So I think we're going to win by 10 goals to nil. 10 goals to nil. 10 goals to nil. Okay, something more similar to January and, and a normal one? We're playing Ajax, so this time we score more. Last time I was, I was incorrect, this time I won't be. I faced some issues when entering I didn't face before with this new gear because I bought some new gear in August before that I was filming with my phone. So back when I was here in February, I was like down there, no sorry, January was it not February? There and um, I didn't see the away section at all, but also there wasn't any problem with the gear because I just had my phone. But now uh, they didn't want me to, to take the camera again. As you see, I managed it eventually, so I can film with a GoPro. It's a really small, it's literally a pocket camera. What I couldn't take in, I have to pick up after the game from the storage, is the GoPro stick, which is really not large, but helps me a lot. But anyway, uh, if you see some, some strange selfie cuts, it's because of that, because I don't have the GoPro stick and holding the, the camera literally in my hands. But yeah, this the camera is here and looking forward to this fantastic game. We have a really great view from the first row of the second tier. Fuck Bay, the home ultras will be that way and we also see the away section. Number two, Divine Ranch, Fiel Goro Hato. Hey, the last one is well. Two, Mees Hilsens. Three, Rudolf and Prepper. Four, Matthias Cello. Eight, Juri Rosier. Dames en heren, jongens en meisjes, FC Twente en Ajax vragen uw aandacht voor het volgende. Dank u wel.
Milan to take the lead 7th or 8th minute. It was a well called goal. I think one or two rebounds eventually. The stadium blew up. An early goal is all you wish for in a top game like this. Let's carry on. on the league table before the game excellent atmosphere and the team actually deserves to be in front by two goals it was once again really well fought once again a rebound and played in the middle and from close into the open goal put away well 2-0 and uh, I know whether we'll see more goals but uh, it looked like that We saw first half with really, really attractive football, early goals, then I has got one back, 2-1 as it stands now, but Twente have that combinative play. Apparently they can hold their tactics and uh, they try to dominate Ajax and they succeeded in that. Ajax a, a team out of form right now. The atmosphere is awesome, it's going to be a, a tough one for Twente though in the second half because now they're only one goal up, so they'll have to defend a bit tighter and Ajax can always get the equalizer. But also Ajax have to attack because they are behind in the league and then on the counter they can be caught any time. Let's see about a second half, pure excitement. Before we carry on with the vlog, a short service message. You probably guess that creating all this content abroad takes up quite much time and money. It wouldn't even be possible without generous supporters offering me a place to stay every now and then. If you have the possibility, please support my work by hitting the thanks button below the video. You can patronize the creation of future HFV videos by that with an amount you choose yourself. Another possibility for this is the channel's Patreon page which you can see on screen and find in the description as well. If you have no intention of sending money to the channel, it's already a huge help. If you like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. I know there are many teenager football supporters watching this channel. In case you're one of them, ignore what I just said about sending cash. Spend it rather on yourself, your friends or buy a new scarf of your favorite team. At your age, I was told to do the same. Thank you very much for your help in advance. Let's carry on with the game. Second half on the way by Ajax. Trent to start the second half incredibly strongly.
After this, I couldn't film anymore. Wanna know why? When entering and almost getting my pocket size camera taken away, I was told not to film. It's hard to explain that to a vlogger who's come all the way from the other side of Europe to make a match day documentary and promote the club's culture. So I tried my best to bring the atmosphere to you, which means I filmed. Right before half time, the security woman who forbade me to film found my seat. I was like, that's really impressive. How the hell did she manage that? First, I could have sat literally anywhere, but this time it was close to the entrance of the section, so it was pretty easy to find me. Second, she really took it into her head, and that was her main project of the day to eventually get me kicked out. I was totally confused when summarizing at halftime, so I missed an important detail, which was that Sam Stein, scorer of the second 20 goal, is actually the son of Ajax's coach. We were joking with friends before the game that he can get his own dad sagged from the club because Ajax are doing really poorly this season so far. Back to the topic, after the start of the second half, I was constantly turning back then looking towards the entrance of the section and it turned out i was right eventually she sent five guards on me i was taken outside like some kind of criminal tried to get back in and one of the older guards literally kicked me in the right leg i tried to explain what i'm doing but they wouldn't listen they didn't even speak proper english which i was really surprised about this happened around the 64th minute right before univar twente's lone player from ajax scored the 3-1 for twente one of the guards asked for my id card and took a picture of both sides now guys popcorn and drinks out here comes the main part this is how i was thrown out that this guy is ridiculous. They are literally escorting me out. I'm allowed to record this though. What was the reason why you're escorting me outside? Tell me the reason. Yeah, tell me the reason. Sir, tell me the reason. Guys, this is ridiculous. Never experienced anything like this. Sir, tell me the reason why you're escorting me outside. <coughs> <laughs> Funny looking back at it, I sounded like a broken record. What's the reason? What's the reason? Never ever thought I'm gonna experience anything like this. I really tried to explain why I'm here and what I'm doing, but they weren't interested at all. I'm not the first one doing a stadium vlog at Twente, let alone it wasn't my first time here. Back in January, I got great appreciation and even a supporters page shared my content. After I was taken out, even the police came to me. They told me to leave the area. In that moment, Twente scored the last goal of the game and I just shouted out loud in my disappointment and shock. Obviously, I wasn't disappointed because Twente scored, but because I, as you see, couldn't bring it to you at all. This happened in front of six security guards and two police officers. I don't remember the last time when I felt so humiliated. I wish this to no one, visitors, guests being treated like this. I must say in general there are still a lot of people who don't seem to understand the social value of documentaries like this. To close the video we see the league table, Ajax are in big trouble and Twente are up top with 100% ratio, 4 wins out of 4, 12 points. I was actually planning on vlogging a lot of Dutch games in the near future but we'll see about that after this. If you like the content as long as I wasn't expelled from the stadium join me on the channel's social media accounts you see all the possibilities on screen i really hope this doesn't happen again this is not what one deserves for spreading word about the club and putting a lot of effort in a documentary like this the supporters i know here took action immediately after the game we'll see if that leads to something i was hfvc in the next one take care